Kimmel, and welcome to the most beloved game show in the world. Who wants to be a millionaire, or as it's known in Canada, so sorry, but if it's not too much bother, we would be very pleased with a million dollars. Let's meet our celebrity contestants. The ladies waiting backstage are very funny friends who co-host a podcast called Best Friends from the movie Thelma and the Disney Plus series Agatha All Along. Please welcome Nicole Byer and Sashir Zameda. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Nicole, Sashir, thank you for coming. I know you are. You really are best friends, are you not? We really are. Yes. Yeah. I love her so much. It's sick. This podcast, you talk about your friendship. You uh, have other best friends on the show? Yeah, we yeah. have sets of best friends who talk about their friendship. And it's really nice to mm -hmm. have people talk about how much they love each other. Yeah, how much they love, love each, each other. other. Yeah. yeah. We tried to get Oprah and Gail, and they said no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe they'll watch this and be like, wow, we should go watch <laughs> What charity are you playing for tonight? Maybe that will help. Yeah, we're playing for the Downtown Women's Center. It's an organization that provides housing, healthcare services, and job placement opportunities for unhoused women in Los Angeles. Very good. Excellent. All right. Let's hope we win a lot of money for them tonight. You are 15 correct answers away from a million dollars. You know how it works. You have four lifelines. You've got 50-50, phone a friend, ask the audience, ask the host. You ready to play? Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> Nicole, Sashir, your first question is for $100. While taking a moonlight swim, a skinny dipper is devoured by a bloodthirsty shark in the opening scene of what classic movie? Jaws, It's a Wonderful Life, Citizen Kane, Great Whites Can't Jump. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, well, it's definitely not It's a Wonderful Life because that's like Christmas, so no one's swimming. Right, right. I think it's Jaws. Yeah, I agree. Should we lock it in? Let's lock it in. We're locking it in. Final answer, A, Jaws. That is correct, Jaws is right. Yes. Yeah. Next question is for $200. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration recommends that school buses be painted a color officially called National School Bus Glossy what? Blue, yellow, red, green. Um, okay, so it's definitely yellow. And that's our final but, uh, answer. That's our final, that's our final answer. answer. Yellow. E yellow, that is correct. Yellow, uh, yeah. yellow school bus. Yeah. Yeah. The next question is for $300. A chance to play in front of supportive fans. Home ice is considered an advantage in which of these professional sports leagues? NFL, NBA, PGA, NHL. You know this. I do. I do. Yeah. What NFL's do football. Yeah. NBA's basketball. basketball. PGA's golf. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure NHL's for the hockey league. The National, the National Hockey, hockey League. league. So I'm Final answer. D. National <laughs> Hockey League. Yeah. NHL. That's right. The National <laughs> Hockey League yeah. is correct. No clapping. I know. I can't stop myself. <laughs> You're doing well. I love sports. <laughs> Got $300. Next question is for $500. Famous for saying, I'll think about it tomorrow, film heroine Scarlett O'Hara is often cited as a poster child for which of these unhealthy tendencies? Perfectionism, procrastination, codependence, paranoia. And oh, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. Wait, do you know? I mean, I do have all of these, but <laughs> I think, I mean, this, the, fra the phrase, I'll think about it tomorrow makes me think of procrastination. Oh my God, you were looking for context clues. I really was. Oh my God. <laughs> because I know Scarlett O'Hara is from Gone with the Wind, right. but I've never seen that. We're gonna go <laughs> with B, procrastination. That's our final answer. Your final answer? Uh-oh. Is correct. <gasps> yes, procrastination. Okay. That's right. Next question is for $1,000. Okay. Admitting that it didn't feel quite right during a pandemic, <laughs> What chain suspended its finger licking good <laughs> slogan in 2020? Pizza Hut, Taco Bell, KFC, McDonald's. I love food. I know it's KFC. Um, and I just think it's funny that they were like conscientious of it. Yeah, the pandemic. Just... Like, we can't be licking off fingers. Um, <laughs> so, C, can I lock it in? Please. Okay, C, KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, final answer. Your final answer is KFC. That's right. That's absolutely yes. correct. 
have $1,000. You are now only 10 questions away from a million dollars. Wow, wow, wow. Next question's for $2,000. Good for strengthening your abs, the dead bug exercise is performed how? Sitting cross-legged, standing on your tippy toes, lying on your back, balancing on one foot. Um, okay, I lived. we lived in New York. Yeah. I've seen a cockroach. <laughs> when you spray them, they get on their back Ooh. before they die. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what I'm thinking, because sitting cross-legged, you've seen a cockroach like that? No. No. They I don't, don't think they have toes. No. And then feet, they got many. Yeah. That would be insane. Imagine seeing a bug on one foot. Okay, we should lock it in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I also agree. I think it's lying on I've actually done this before. That's my favorite oh. one, because you're laying down. So, ah. <laughs> so yeah, let's lock it in. Okay, lock it. We're, uh, final answer, C, laying on your back. C is your answer. That is the right answer. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're like questioning this. Weirdly, I'm working on a children's book right now called The Cross-Legged Cockroach. I think you guys are going to love it. <laughs> All right, you have $2,000. Your next question's for $4,000. You can have an unobstructed view of the Statue of Liberty's butt, if that's your thing, while visiting which of these other U.S. landmarks? Ellis Island, Fort Sumter, Monticello, Bunker Hill. Mm. I think you know it. I think I do too. I mean, I, I, I think Ellis Island might be the only one that's like in, in New, New York. York. Cause like, where's Bunker Hill? Where's Fort Sumner? Monticello? Monticello's in Virginia. Virginia. I know that for sure. Ellis Island, we know for sure. Yeah. I think the Statue of Liberty's on Ellis Island. Mm, I don't mm, know, but I think we should go with A. I think so too. Ooh, baby, our final answer is A. All right. Monticello is in Virginia, as you said. Fort Sumter's in South Carolina. Okay. Bunker Hill is in Boston. Oh, you had it right. You hit me. I was like, wait a minute. Uh, this is Lynn. Wow. Oh, my God. You're doing well. Okay. It's none of your lifelines. You've got $4,000. Your next question's for $8,000. Okay. Which of these first names consists of a three letter English word followed by that word's Spanish equivalent? Theo, Maya, Andy, Sean. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> three, so within these names, yeah. there's a three letter word, yeah. and then there's a Spanish equivalent of that word. So, Sean's not Spanish. Andy, no. No, I think you were looking what? for three letters within the name, so not the full name. So like, uh, you got you you handle it. I, th I think, <laughs> I think it's like uh, the first three letters. The f oh, the first three letters of the name. So T H E, which is the M A Y, May A N D and and A N D and yeah. And then the Spanish. When you say and in Spanish, you say. Is it why? <laughs> e. If you know this, you. I don't I, have to understand. But you this. know Spanish. So Hola. Hola. I just that's, to, that's what I know. I just want you to get on board. It's like Nicole E. Sashir and E. Right? Listen, I'm out. <laughs> we can use a lifeline or something, but if you get I, this <laughs> question, you can answer it. <laughs> I, think, I think that is it. Okay, <laughs> so I'll say it. <laughs> I'm out. No habla. <laughs> uh, final answer, C, Andy. You figured that out beautifully. That's right. Andy is right. I didn't mean to say it. And <laughs> E. I just wasn't going to understand it no matter how much you talked okay. to me. Yeah, that one was hard to follow. Yeah, that was you did a good job of getting to the bottom of that, that one. so hard. <laughs> You're oh doing God. great. Your next question's for $16,000. Oh this one might break me. No, it's, you can't get stressed out now. <laughs> Since 2014, whose sonorous voice has been heard in Arby's ads insisting, we have the meats? I think I know this one. Uh -huh. Morgan Freeman, Samuel L. Jackson, Dennis Haysbert, Ving Rhames. It's Dennis. Nice. We have the meats. <laughs> Wait, okay. I'm 99% sure. I don't know. You don't know? I mean, I don't think it's Morgan Freeman or Samuel L. Jackson. I think it's C. Dennis Haysbert. Okay, I trust you. 
You trust me? Yeah. Okay, that is our final answer, C. Dennis. Wait, that noise, oh my God, is it wrong? Ooh. It is not right, it was Ving, Ving Rames. Rames. Ving <laughs> Rames was the guy who has the meat. Oh. Dennis Haysbert has no meat at all. No meat at all? Oh, he has all state. Yeah. yeah. But the good news is, we're still gonna give $32,000 to your charity. And we enjoyed our time together. To Sheer and Nicole, everybody. We'll be right back to play more of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Nina, it's uh, Dave. We're at the million dollar <laughs> mark. We're gonna let down so many Korean mothers. <laughs> I think it's it's probably Harrison. Her words were, "It's probably Harrison." B. Benjamin Harrison. Final answer. David Chang. Your metallic testicles just won you a million dollars for your charity. Welcome back to the show, our million dollar winner, David Chang, and his phone, a friend who made it happen, Mina Kimes, are here with us. Hey there, David and Mina. What are you thinking when you see that? so insane. I still can't believe it happened. I can't believe you heard me in that tone say that and then went with it. Would you have bet the half million dollars and went for it there? Absolutely not. I don't think anybody would, but I felt compelled. <laughs> would you say you have a gambling problem? <laughs> Jimmy, you know me, and I think that was one of the reasons you wanted me on the show. I, I would go for it, and I did. Thankfully, I was right. David, Mina said she did not realize how insane you were until that very moment, right? I didn't realize how insane I was either until that very moment, because uh, I really didn't know the answer, and it took me such a long time to read the question to her um, that she answered with a question or not very sure of herself. Like, yeah, Harrison? but she was right. Yeah. I mean, she was right. And we just thought, you know, since that happened during COVID and it was an empty room that you won a million dollars, we figured we owed you a round of applause for winning that million dollars in front of the studio audience. Both of you. Our next players co-star together on one of the most beloved TV sitcoms of all time. One of them hosts a podcast slash YouTube series about it called Full House Rewind. The other is an eternally beautiful Greek god. Say hello to John Stamos and Dave Coulier. Yeah. Jimmy, you look great. You look great. I like the glasses, John. Are those your smart guy glasses? Yeah, I need them to look smart. Which one of you Anything. is smarter? Just so I Dave. know who to kind of lean toward. Dave, you? It would be me. It would be you. <laughs> what charities are you playing for tonight, fellas? I am playing for uh, Children's Hospital of Michigan. I like that. That's and, good. Uh, yeah. I'm representing my home state of Michigan, and I've visited those kids there at that facility, and it's a wonderful pediatric care center for kids, so I'm so happy to be playing that for those kids. That is great. And John Stamos, you are playing for? Child Help, which is uh, the prevention of child abuse, and uh, I've been involved with them for maybe almost 35 years now. My mother used to take me up there to um, where all the kids were, and you, you guys would come We too, hosted huh? the Christmas show together That's a right. couple of times. Good men. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's win some money. Let's win a lot of money. You have 15 correct answers you have to give me to win a million dollars for your charities. The rules are very simple. The more you get right, the more money you win. You have four lifelines to help you. You had a very Regis vibe going there. You, I do. You know what? I'm trying to channel Regis as much as I can, not just on the show, but in my personal life. In fact, I keep calling my wife Joy. <laughs> Are you ready to play? Yes. Let's Who play. wants to be a millionaire? Who <laughs> wants to play? That's Audience, good. are you ready? There we go. Let's do it. Let's put Who wants to be a millionaire? Here we go. 
Let's start it out with a question for $100. The question is, challenge to write a bone-chilling story, a young Mary Shelley dreamt up what terrifying tale? Frankenstein, Anne of Green Gables, Charlotte's Web, Tuesdays with Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> uh, a, Frankenstein would be our answer. And that is the correct answer. Frankenstein's right, Mary Shelley. You got $100. Your next question is for $200. A must-have fashion item for the bros, jorts are shorts made of what material? Linen, khaki, corduroy, denim. Do you know this one? I, I've never worn anything close to this, no. <laughs> jorts. Well, you, you, yeah, you don't wear shorts, because you got... Very skinny legs. Very skinny legs, <laughs> yeah. But I think I know what it is. Je it's je probably sh jeans and shorts. Yeah. D, denim is our final answer. Your final answer, D is for denim. Jeans plus shorts, that's right, George. I didn't know it was a must-have fashion item. Yeah. <laughs> My right, next question is for $300. Before handing over the keys to a Wienermobile, Oscar Mayer requires drivers to complete a two-week course at what school? Curly Fry Community College, Hot Dog High, Pepperoni Pizza Prep, Chicken Tender Technical Institute. Well, wieners are hot dogs, right? Sometimes. And have you ever had a hot dog high? <laughs> no, you know. <laughs> would you say hot dog? Oscar, Ma I would. I just did. Our final answer. The correct answer. Hot dog high is what we're doing. <laughs> you got $300. Your next yeah. question is for $500. Okay. What 2023 film stars and actors sometimes playfully referred to on the interwebs as Timothée Chardonnay? Ferrari, Wonka, Blue Beetle, Napoleon. I'd say it was uh, B. Wonka, Timothy Chalamet. Uh, that is my final answer. Your final answer is Wonka, and that is the right answer, John Stamos. Yes, it's Wonka. You're doing well. The next question is for $1,000. Which of these instruments is depicted on 2024 U.S. postage stamps that celebrate bluegrass music? Cello, maracas, sitar, banjo. I would say our answer would be D, banjo. The banjo. Final answer. And of course, yes, that is absolutely correct. There you go. You see that? How easy it is? You've won $1,000. You're only 10 questions away from a million dollars. Let's take the money now and run. OK. You can if you want, but I wouldn't. Oh, no, we'll stay. The next question is for $2,000. Question is, in 2024, New York's Rockefeller Plaza was temporarily renamed Olivia Benson Plaza to celebrate the 25th anniversary of what TV series? Oh. The West Wing, Family Guy, Law and Order Special Victims Unit, The Sopranos. Olivia Benson. Well, I think it's C. You I think? think they... Do you want to do a 50-50? No. Or ask the audience? I think it's funny, people now watching television, watching two guys who've been on television their whole lives, who apparently never watched television. I, w I was on that show, and I didn't, I haven't watched it. <laughs> you don't wanna, you don't wanna use? Uh... I know it wasn't West Wing, right? Okay. And it wasn't, that wasn't a New it York wasn't show. It wasn't Family Guy. It wasn't a cartoon. It wasn't. 25th anniversary, of the Sopranos, no, right? If Why we, if we lost right now, and we had four lifelines, we couldn't be friends. <laughs> C, Law and Order Special Victims Unit, final answer. I gotta tell you, first of all, you know, all of these shows started 25 years ago, so it's not such an easy question, but um, you answered it right. Ah. It is C. Well done. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Let's get right into it. Let's play Millionaire. 
Next question is for $4,000. Often said to be the world's most unhygienic attraction, which of these famous objects is regularly sanitized throughout the day? Blarney Stone, Pope Diamond, Ooh. Gutenberg Bible, Venus de Milo. In my high school marching band, I went to, to, uh, to Ireland, and I have a picture of me kissing the Blarney Stone. Well, and they cleaned no, it right after. Well, no wonder it's the most unhygienic attraction. <laughs> John Stamos, you kissed a stone. <laughs> I set him up for you. Uh, Your yeah, marching cool. band went to Ireland? Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. We went to, like, Eagle Rock. <laughs> <laughs> you played clarinet? I did. Yeah, I was a drummer. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> that's where we went in different directions. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> we would have been best friends. <laughs> So the Hope Diamond, you can't, you can't touch right, it. Right, and yeah. Venus de Milo is the statue. Yeah, uh, yeah. Too high to touch it. Yeah, I, I would say Blarney Stone. I'm pretty confident. Are you? Gutenberg Bible, that's... Steve Gutenberg, I, did, I didn't know he had a Bible. <laughs> <laughs> you think uh, it's Blarney Stone? I think so, because you go and you purposely I know, I touch did it. the Blarney Stone. I, I did. With your you mouth. did it. Yeah. Yeah, and I would, I would sanitize my hands if I saw you do that. <laughs> Do you want to say Blarney Stone? We say A, Blarney Stone, final answer. Your final answer is Blarney Stone. People kiss the Blarney Stone. And yeah, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. Well done. All right, your next question for $8,000 is, after Guy Fieri lost over 30 pounds, the slimmed-down mayor of Flavortown credited rucking a form of exercise that involves what? Balancing on a slack line, grappling in a sand pit, hiking in a weighted vest, cycling up steep inclines. I think it's D. We got to get help on this one. You want to get think, help? Yeah, because it doesn't rucking is it's rucking. You think Jimmy knows? He knows food. He's probably friends, friends with Guy. Huh? He has said words that sound like rocking. <laughs> like, how did I get stuck with these two rocking idiots on the yes. show? It's not grappling in a sand pit. I think it's cycling. I think we got to do use. I think we got to ask Jimmy. Uh, you think, think Jimmy will know? Nah, he doesn't exercise. <laughs> That's not nice. Apologize to me. He sorry, knows Jimmy. me. That's he knows. Nice. He knows okay. it's true. I mean, <laughs> all right. Yeah. We could. Uh, we could either ask Jimmy or the audience. I'm kind of confident it's either hiking in a weighted vest or cycling up. Well, the Steve, word either it doesn't work with confident. Clients. Confident, it's either. Should we go 50-50 then? And then if it's if it's cycling up steep inclines, you want to go with that then if we do 50-50? Well, we don't know if that's going to be part of the 50-50. But if it is, that's... <laughs> go like this. Now you oh, see why see? I hate You know, it's a good thing I don't wear a toupee because it would be over there right now. <laughs> do you want to do 50 50? Let's if... ask Jimmy. All right, Jimmy, we're going to ask you. Um, just to be clear, I do not have the answers to the questions. Okay. But you're smart. Eh. You know a lot of. But here's have what you, I. You've think. had Guy on your show a million And you're times. right, I do know Guy. Yeah. I know there's a rucksack. Oh. I know a rucksack is something that you carry. And I'm very sure that my final answer is C, hiking in a weighted vest. I agree. We're going to take C for our final answer, Jimmy. Jimmy? All right. Well, we have to go to the computer now to reveal the correct answer. Ah, and it is... In the army, they have a rucksack, right? Yeah. Okay. You've got eight thousand dollars. Your next question is for sixteen thousand dollars. What is the only U.S. state capital whose name shares no letters with the name of its state? Dover, Montgomery, Jefferson City, Pierre. What is the only U.S. state capital whose name? She has no letters. Shows no no letters. State. I will. What, these are the. Pierre places. is South Dakota, which doesn't share any letters. Dover is Seoul. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> you want to go with Lucky Pierre? I would go with Lucky Pierre, but we've still got three lifelines. But we still have 27 I know. questions. Oh, I, I know. I'm here on the show with you, John. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? You want to go uh, with Pierre? Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty confident. I just, I'm being... I'm doing my own 50-50 right now because I don't know the other two. Okay, you want to do 50-50? We could do 50-50, and if Pierre is one of them, I would, I'd be very confident going with Pierre. Can we trade the, can we have the 50-50, Jim? All right. Computer, please take away two of the wrong answers. <laughs> Jefferson City? Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll take uh, D. Pierre as our final answer, Jim. You were right the whole time, Dave. You would never have doubted yourself. You were right the whole time. You're doing well. You got $16,000. All right, we'll take a break, and we'll be back to play more Millionaire. $16,000. Next question is for $32,000. In a 2024 interview, Meryl Streep fondly recalled the love scene in Out of Africa in which Robert Redford's character tenderly does what? Hand feeds her figs, applies mud to her legs, shampoos her hair, wraps her broken ankle. Do you remember this movie? No. I don't watch movies. I think we should ask the audience. I think enough people here would have seen the movie to really help us. And then we get to 32,000. And then at least we get to have a very intelligent guess. OK. Do you want to do that? you want to ask the audience? I feel, I feel good about this audience. I mean, listen, if you can't feel good about a group of random strangers in Culver City, yes. who can you feel exactly. good about? That's how I feel. You want to use that lifeline? Well, yes. Want to ask the audience? Yeah. All right. Let's ask the audience. Audience, John and Dave need your help. Are you keypads? Vote now. I'll tell you, the audience is right more than 90% of the time. Doesn't mean this one is, but... <laughs> oh, boy. The number one answer with 31% of the vote was wraps her broken ankle, followed by shampoos her hair, followed by applies mud to her legs, and finally hand feeds her figs. In other words, you don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's right. I don't think D is. You don't, I don't think, think no. you think it's shampoo her hair? Well, that's the second one, C? Yeah. I think it's shampoos her hair. I that would be right nice. Too. Yeah. That would be sexy. That would be very kind. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I think. OK, uh, we're going to go with C, shampoos her hair, and that is our final answer, Jim. Even though our audience got it wrong, you guys got it right. Woo! You won $32,000. You're five questions away from winning a million dollars. Next question's for $64,000. Four, $64,000. If you have brain freeze after eating ice cream too quickly, Johns Hopkins recommends pressing your thumb where to relieve the headache? Into the roof of your mouth, on one of your temples, under your chin, into your ear canal. I think it's A, because I've done that before. Not to myself, but to someone else. Uh, <laughs> Is that when you were on ER? Yeah. <laughs> Under your chin, I'm not sure what that. No, temples. That doesn't no, keep ear your... canal. It could be ear canal, but I don't think. I think it's. I, I feel that here. Let me show you. Onto one ear. No, I know where that hand could have been. <laughs> if you think it's in the roof of your mouth, which would which would make sense because maybe the uh, pressing the you know skin on the inside of your mouth would force blood into that area, and it would. Uh, I thought you were going to be better at this. I'm talking it out. I'm not done yet. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> under your chin doesn't make sense. Into your ear canal. <laughs> I 
your thumb. I think it, I think I think it's that. Your thumb doesn't really fit into your ear canal. And one of your oh, yours does. Under your chin, you think it's into the roof of your mouth? No, uh, that's I do. We that. could no. <laughs> this is how it's been for 35 years. It seems to be working. I kind of agree with you there. Okay. I think it's into the Let's roof of your mouth. That would make the most sense since it is your mouth that is channeling the freeze to your brain. Right. It's associative. Great. Uh, we'll say A uh -huh, and the, into the roof of your mouth as our final answer. You know, I don't know what the answer is, but when you when you think about it, and you, when you did it, I could feel it working. <laughs> right? Yeah. And once again, you trusted your guts, and once again, your guts have come through for you. Okay, we'll take a break, and we'll be back to play more Millionaire. You are watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Hey, guys, guess what? You got $64,000 right now. We're already past. We're past. We got to get to 250. We got to get to 125. 125. We got to do that. You still have your phone a friend? Okay. So the next question, so if we get the next question right, we're at 125. That is correct. Yeah. Ready for your next question? Yes. Here it is. For 125 thousand dollars which of these not very upbeat birds is mentioned in the lyrics of the classic 1950s song rock and robin vulture buzzard ostrich condor which of these not very upbeat birds is a uh, which is mentioned in that song oh this is such a good question for john i mean i, I feel like this is when it was written for john <laughs> I would have to say it's B. You think it is? What did you because think it was? I think Walter? it's. I think it's. Eh. Buzzard. I, I think it's buzzard. You think it's buzzard. I don't think we use our phone a friend here because I don't think our friend would know this. Buzzard. It's buzzard. What am I doing here? You, you know. You're sure. Well, it might be condor. Who would write condor? Who would write condor in the street? There's a big old condor on my street. Watching Robin Robin go tweet, tweet, tweet. He's a vulture, it's no. not an ostrich. Oh, Rock and Robin, there's an ostrich on the roof. <laughs> oh, he wouldn't have any of those. I think it's buzzard, too. We're going to go with B, buzzard. buzzard. Jimmy, and that is our final answer. Oh, your final answer is buzzard. buzzard. The buzzard and the thing. Right, right. Yeah, well, this goes. Uh, uh, second person. It goes. He out. Oh, outsmart, uh, outsmart the thing and the buzzard and the thing and the buzzard. And the Oriole. Yeah. Do you know it? <laughs> the marching band never did Rock and Robin. Oh. Okay. Could be Vulture. Could be Vulture. Could be Vulture. For $125,000. The answer is buzzard, B, yeah. Wow, good, B, what was your gut? Next question is for $250,000. Although most people think there's only one, what masterpiece exists in five different versions? Four paintings and a black and white lithograph. The Starry Night, Nighthawks, The Scream, Christina's world. Um, I think it's one. I think it's either A or C, the Starry Night or the Scream. All right, here's the deal. If, if we if we use our, our phone, right. just figure out how we can say this fast. Um, uh, let me think. I mean, he might know it. Our our friend's pretty smart. Uh, there's only one. What masterpiece exists in five in five yeah, different? Forget versions. that first part of the question. You okay. would just say... How would you say it? What masterpiece has five different versions? Four paintings, uh -huh. a black and white lithograph. It's a, it's a masterpiece. Starry Night, Nighthawks, The Scream, uh -huh. or uh -huh. Christina's World. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Do, should we call? Should we use our, our phone, phone a friend? I think so, because I have no idea. Who is your phone a friend? Aladdin. He was the voice of Aladdin. Oh, for real? Scott Weinger. Oh. Uh, who... All right. Who played Steve Hale on Full House, DJ's uh, love interest. I never saw it. You never saw the show? <laughs> He's a Harvard graduate. Oh, great. So I guess we should call him to see if all that money his parents spent at Harvard <laughs> was worth it. Let's he, see if he, he paid attention in art history class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, he uh, uh, he's a bright guy. He is I think he I think he will know this. You want to use your phone a friend? Yeah. Yeah, let's use our phone a friend. Let's get him on the line. Hello, Scott. It's me, the genie. <laughs> what are you rubbing for right now? <laughs> hello? Scott, hello, it's Jimmy hello? Kimmel from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Jimmy! How are How you? you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice to hear from you. Scott, can you do give us a little Aladdin? Uh, carpet. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's him, all right. All right, so here's how it's going to work. Dave is going to read you the question. He's going to read you four possible answers. You have 30 seconds, including him reading the question, okay? I'm ready. Right. Scott, your time starts now. In the art world, what masterpiece exists in five different versions? Four paintings and a black and white lithograph. Starry Night, Nighthawks, The Scream, or Christina's World? Okay, say them again. Starry Night, Nighthawks, The Scream, or Christina's World? Oh Four God. paintings and, and one black and white lithograph. Go. Okay. Starry Name Night. Like Name it. Three yeah, seconds. Definitely not that. Go. It's, it's not Starry Night. What? It's not Starry Night. Okay, he said it's not Starry Night. All right, well. I told you we should have called someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call Scott in uh, Harvard. Monday morning quarterback. Yeah. I, I think it, I think it's the scream. I think it's the scream, and I and I'm gonna say, are you good with that? So you think it's the scream? I think it's. I think Why it's do you scream. think it's the scream? Because my instinct tells me that early. We've been winning on our instincts, right? You're my teammate. If you feel strong, I gotta support my teammate. Well, why? Well, those two. He said it wasn't this. We don't know those two. Scott said it's not Starry Night. Right. I'd like to say, see, the scream for my final answer. Nighthawks is a very famous painting. If you saw it, you'd know it instantly. Christina's World, a very famous painting. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the Starry Night, one of the most famous paintings of yep. all time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And The Scream, also one of the most famous paintings yes, of all is. time. <laughs> guys dear god throughout this game you've trusted dave's gut and dear then Lord. john comes in he doesn't even know one two of the people and yet somehow somehow he managed to get it right yeah! <laughs> That's $250,000 on a hunch, oh. on a hunch. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with more Millionaire. Welcome back. We're on a roll. Let's do it. Let's play Millionaire. For half a million dollars. Since he reportedly hated the nickname Scarface, Al Capone's inner circle called him by what name? Slang for stylish. Alphonse Capone. Bimbo. Snorky. Oh. Nerds. <laughs> Sheba. Uh. Uh. 
I'd like to call Joe Pesci on this one. Because I'm going to shoot you in the foot, Spider, if you don't get this one. Unbelievable. Hey, Bimbo. I don't bimbo. Hey, bimbo. This is a guess, doing? though. So if we total save, guess, yeah. So if we say let's take the money and run, we go, we're out of here we're with two fifty. Two fifty. That's, That's right. a lot of money. Because I have no. I don't either. Idea. But if we got a ride, five hundred, it would be a guess. It would be bimbo. But I. I and then if we, if we got it yeah. wrong, how much would we go home with? I don't remember. You go home with thirty-two thousand dollars. Versus two fifty. I think we take the money. I think it's. I think it's bimbo. I just have a. And don't say I have the a hunch. F word. Don't say the F word. The F word. No. Um, look, 125, 125. It, is that tax free? Well, it is a charitable donation. It goes directly to the kids. It yeah. would be fantastic. Should we take the money and run? I think we should take the money and run. That's our final answer. That's a good answer. Dave, you said, you said, uh, what, bimbo? Bimbo. Yeah. That John, was... you would have said what? Either Bimbo or Sheba. Okay, well, let's find out just for the hell of it what the uh, right answer is. The right answer is Bo! Snorky. So you made the right decision. Yeah. Never happier to be wrong, right? Yeah. Congratulations, John Stamos and Dave Poulin walking away with $250,000 for charity. Our time is done, but we will be back next time with more Millionaire. Good night. Thank you for watching. Deadpool and Wolverines, Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman guest host Jimmy Kimmel Live with Emma Corrin tonight.